Because this is the most complex joint in the timber frame, we have a model that we can show you and we'll walk you through how to cut it and how it goes together. To get the most out of this little discussion, you should grab your cut sheet for post one, which is page nine in the packet. So first, just to walk back a little bit, when we were doing the layout for post one, we measured up to 110 inches, and this is described as the shelf cut line. It's one inch deep. So if you look at the north or south elevation of post one, you can see that cut. If you look at the east face of post one, you can see this mortise indicated this line here for the actual bottom of the mortise is at 111 and a half inches and the top of the mortise is 121 and a half inches and then of course the tenon is at 136 inches. What's very confusing about this joint is that we have two different slants. First of all on the side we have this taper cut for the beam that starts at 120 inches and runs down to 110 inches and over that 10 inches it runs into the post one inch. The second slant, to make it a little more confusing, is what's happening on the bottom of this mortise. So again, the mortise height here is 111 and a half inches. On the back side of the mortise, if you look in where my thumb is, this elevation is 110 inches. So this floor of the mortise slants from 111 and a half inches down to 110, so a total difference of an inch and a half. The reason we do that is to lock the beam onto the post. If you look at this tenon that will be going into the post, you can see that the bottom of the tenon is also cut on a slant. That is one and a half inch taper from this point to this point. And you can see the one inch taper on the side of the beam from this point to this point. Here's what it looks like when we put it together. <clears throat> So the beam enters the post at 121 and a half inches and as Gabe slides it in it's actually lowering an inch and a half so the top surface of the beam will end up at 120 inches. Now we have the two wedge shaped, the wedge on the bottom of the tenon and the wedge on the bottom of the mortise. We're going to lock those two together using this wedge. This is an inch and a quarter at this end and an inch and three quarters at this end, overall is 10 inches long. It is two and a half inches wide to match the mortise. We will drive that wedge with a sledge to the point just before breaking. You might need to practice that a little bit. So now that the joint is together, it's worth pointing out a few things. First of all, notice that the entire cross section, the full eight inch width of the beam, is bearing on this one inch deep shelf. That runs all the way across the post. Also note that the top of the mortise here is perpendicular to this surface. So when you're chiseling that, as Gabe has done, it runs straight through, not on an angle. The reason that the bottom of the tenon is cut on an angle and the bottom of the mortise is cut on an angle is to lock the two things together. Right? We call this a wedged half dovetail. Why do we do that? Because the weight of the roof is pushing out on the top of this post. So we have a wedge-shaped piece here, and we have a wedge-shaped mating of the mortise and tenon on the bottom. Driving this wedge in locks those two together so that the post can't be separated from the beam. In addition to using the wedge to tie the beam to the post, we will also install two pegs through this tenon and all the way through the post, the old belt and suspenders approach. Now that we've got it all put together, we're going to take it apart and talk about the order in which to cut this joint. Because it's so complicated, it's worth your while to follow a very particular order that we'll outline. Wedge out. And tie beam out. So again, you want to take a look at your cut sheet to get as much out of this as possible. <clears throat> um, Gabe has slicked the three sides of the mortise. We have to do the uh, slant on the bottom of the mortise and we have to do this tapered cut on the side of the post as well. It's very important to do this cut first. The reason for that is that we have an elevation mark here at 111 and a half inches. That's a very important reference for where this mortise taper should start. On the back side we have a mark at 110. We're basically going to connect a straight line between 111 and a half inches here to 110 inches here. If you cut out the taper on the side of the post first, this important elevation mark goes away and it's very difficult to get back because now we're into the post. 
So this is not actually 111 and a half inches above the bottom of the post. It's a little bit less because we've cut into the post. So you want to make sure that you cut this taper first from 111 and a half down to 110. This taper first and then you'll cut out this last. You'll be making a cut from 111 and a half inches on this side to 110 inches on this side. Inside the post it's going to look something like this. 111 and a half, 110 down here. As you're looking at your cut sheet for post one, note that our model looks different. Don't let that confuse you. This is just a generic model that's attempting to illustrate the mortise that's going on here. When you look at the east view of post one, you'll notice that the tenon is all the way over to the right, whereas the tenon on this model is centered. They're just different. So Gabe is now going to finish the mortise following that order. He'll cut the bottom of this mortise first and then the shelf cut second. Hey there, thank you for watching. Here at Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine, we teach a wide variety of house building and timber framing and carving classes. We'd love to see you here, but if you can't make it to Maine to take one of our classes, our online class is available at shelterinstitute.com.